My name is Susan Willis Dunlap. I am the daughter of Alan Richard Willis, who was a co-pilot of a B-17 in World War II. His plane crashed during the raid, the first daylight raid on Berlin, yeah, March 6, uh, 1944. And my family and I decided it was important to go to the field and stand there and uh, be a part of remembering the men who died and the men who survived on that day. Uh, my children and I flew to Stophorst. Uh, we drove up to the field. We knew the exact time that the plane had crashed. And so we made sure we were there at 3.30. We pull up, and it's a, it's a farm and then just an open field. And there were probably 30 strangers standing there. And we went around and met everyone. There were school children who uh, maintained this monument to the men who died that day. We met their parents. We met their school teacher. And it's a very, uh, it's a very simple sort of a plaque on a rock, on a rock. at the edge of the field. Yes, at the edge of a tremendous field. I don't think I realized how large the field was going to be. Um, one of the thrills was meeting an eyewitness to the crash. He had been six years old. He was sitting on a fence. Of course, I think they all came out. They knew the raid was going on. They'd heard the planes go over, so they were waiting for the planes to come back. He was able to tell me the route, where my father parachuted, where the plane crashed. Um, we met, um, who else, just local townspeople who came out. I don't, the word had spread. Uh, some local newspapers were there. My daughter got this crazy idea that she was going to thank the crowd in Dutch, which she did beautifully. She had practiced. She had practiced. And then I went around and very deliberately shook the hands of every single person there. With tears in my eyes, I said thank you. Because in my mind, they all had saved my father. And I knew that I would not be standing there if they hadn't been so brave and kind and generous and truly risked their lives to help him. Because it, exactly like you said, um, the pilot went down with the with the plane. The uh, Some of the guys were able to bail out, um, and at least one of them, in the time that it took him to, to land from 3,000 feet, had been shot in the air by soldiers on the ground. Right. It was, I didn't realize how what an easy target a parachute was. So, and, and, and your dad would have been fairly close in that vicinity at the same time. There is no chance that luck had a huge part in it. But the Germans were racing to the field. It wasn't like there was a delay. It was yeah. easy to spot the fire. They were heading that way, and the townspeople got there first and whisked these men away. And that basically started a a six month uh, sort of behind enemy lines where he, they smuggled him to Paris over they did for the uh, basically in time for the liberation he went from house to house and barn to barn and field to field and always with somebody else showing up to pick him up and show him the way and then they got him across the lines from Belgium into France and the story goes that the guide who took him and his bombardier across the border was probably captured and killed on his way home. So I think a lot of very brave people risked their own lives to help him. How did Second Lieutenant Willis end his war? Uh, he ended his war in Panama. They would not let him go back to Europe because they were afraid he would um, endanger some of the people who had helped him. So he had a beautiful voice and he started a radio career. He was an announcer with Armed Forces Radio based in Panama. So I think he got to relax a little bit, which is, which is fine. 